Or some people call it memory. My friends and I play it all the time. I'm the best at it. The object, if you don't already know the rules, is to find two cards that match. Boom! So, my friends and I have added a rule. Anytime you make a match, you get candy. Candy, 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 candy. A rule, and rules are part of life. Yes! You've got to talk about rules when you're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Of course, the rules don't say I have to eat candy every time I get a match. So, usually, I save it for later. This is what I've won so far. I mean, what can I say? I know how to pick them. <laughs> My friends are like, you're too good at this game. Give us some candy. And I'm like, get your own. I might have a problem. No. <gasps> Today's story is one that Jesus told about a man who had a little problem. <laughs> with sharing. Who knows what that's like. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Mine. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Everywhere Jesus went, large crowds followed him. Some really wanted to learn and change. Some were just curious. Others, like the religious leaders, listened to Jesus' words so they could trap him with tricky questions. But there were some people who just wanted Jesus to back them up, to tell them that their way was the right way. One of these was a man, we'll call him Ezra. Teacher, hey, teacher. Ezra's demand was loud enough that everyone stopped talking to look at him. Uh, are you gonna let me through or what? Ezra shoved through the crowd, dragging another man behind him, his brother. Teacher, you've got to tell my brother here that he has to divide the family property with me. Ezra's brother looked like he wanted to sink straight into the ground. Jesus turned to Ezra. Friend, who made me judge or umpire between you? People listen to you. I thought you could 
you know, just settle this. Tell my brother I'm right. Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. That is not what I asked. Jesus didn't argue with the man. Instead, he told a story, a parable. If he had told this story today, it might sound just a little something like this. There once was a rich man whose field grew a fantastic crop of grain. Perhaps it was corn. His manager brought him the good news. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper harvest of cobs and kernels. Yes! Go me! Oh, well, your employees did an excellent job of preparing the fields. Go me! And there was a lot of sunshine. Go me! And just the right amount of rain. Go me! Uh, yes, go you. Harvest the crop at once! Oh, well, we're working on that. There's uh, just a, a little problem. Problem? Who messed up? Fire them at once! Oh, no, 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 it's a good problem. You, you don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. Huh. huh. I'm just too successful. Go me. Well, I was thinking you could share some of the grain. Share it? Well, yes. Some extra bushels for your employees, maybe give some of it away, popcorn for all the kids in town, hold a cornbread festival for everyone. But, uh, but it's all mine. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store up all the extra grain for myself. Oh. See to it. I want those new barns up by the time the corn harvest is in. <sighs> yes, sir. The old barns were torn down and brand new, bigger barns were built. Perfection. Is the corn harvest complete? Yes, sir. All finished. Excellent. Have the men store it all in these new barns immediately. But, but they're so tired. I said immediately. <sighs> yes, sir. At last, the rich man's entire corn crop was stored in his shiny new barns. He settled back in a comfy deck chair and surveyed his property as the sun set. Go me! Self, you've done pretty well for yourself. You got grain stored away for a lot of years to come. He popped a gourmet corn chip into his mouth. Self, take it easy. Eat, drink, and live it up. You foolish man. The rich man nearly choked on his chip. <coughs> Excuse me? The rich man looked around, but he could see no one. He was entirely alone. Oh, great. Is this supposed to be some God moment where I discover what I've been doing wrong? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. You foolish man. Tonight, I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Uh, could we come up with a different ending to this story? But there was no way out for the rich man. He had chosen to focus only on what he could keep for himself. Jesus wrapped up his parable by explaining. That is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. We don't know how Ezra responded, but maybe, just maybe, he started worrying less about getting more of his family's stuff. Maybe he started to care a little more about sharing what he did have with his brother. Jesus told the story of a rich man. He had more than enough food for himself to eat, and he kept it all every last grain. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with saving. It's good to save your allowance money for that new toy you want. It's good to save candy for later instead of eating it all at once. But saving wasn't the problem with the rich man. No, his problem was his heart. He loved himself and his stuff more than he loved other people. And that's not good because people are always more important than stuff. You see, I can't say that I'm a follower of Jesus if I'm going to be selfish with the things I have. Those things don't match. It's our responsibility to share with others. And we all have something we can share. Maybe you have time to share, or money, or candy.
You're going to have all kinds of chances in your life to share with someone who has less than you. Don't miss your chance. Here's a rule for life to remember today. Share what you have. I've got candy to share next time I see my friends. I've got clothes I don't wear anymore that I could donate. And I've got time. If anyone wants to play concentration with me later, although I warn you, I'm pretty much the best at it. <laughs> See you next time. I'll save you some candy. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for another round of life-size Hungry Hungry Hippos? Let's bring out our players! Woo! I want you! Here we go, here we go, here we go! Bing bong! Players, take your positions! I'm ready. You ready, chicken? All right! Here we go, panda. Show them what we're made of. Oh yeah, that's good center of gravity. Get ready! Get set, go! Ha! Got you. Ha! Yes! Yes! All of them! Mine! And not yours! I am better! In the spheres. I am superior! You are not! Oh, Steven's that. looking That's like he's point. ahead! Oh, Lawson's really Do moving across the floor! Come on. Here we go. Come on. They're the neck and neck! Ball, ah. And... You have the right! All the way across the floor, the panda's really raking him across the coal. Steven's moving for the last big one. I got the big ball! Basketball, basketball, basketball! Yeah! You got the, where was that one? Steven wins! That's not bad, I didn't even see the big one. Fine. Look at that. I'll spot you a point, you can have that one. I didn't want anyway. Cause he won. That was a good one. What's next? What's up? Now it's time for Life Size Jumanji. Nope, I'm out. Hey everybody, I'm Lawson. And I'm Steven. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. Oh, look at that. A comic book falling from the sky. It's a literary miracle. Yeah, more like a out of control comic book collection. What? No, 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 no. Don't say that. They'll hear you. Who? The drawings? Okay, seriously, Lawson, can you please explain what's going on here? What? A guy can't like comics? This is not liking comics. This is preventing us from being able to do literally anything on the show today. Not true! <laughs> Look, these comics are all the same. Yeah, Frog Defenders of Saturn, issue number 106. It says 109. It's a misprint, and that's what makes them more valuable. Wait a minute, are you, are, are you telling me that all of these are Frog Defenders of Saturn, issue 109? 106. Why? Because they're mine, Stephen. They're all mine! But if they're all yours, that means nobody else can have one. Precisely! How much did all this cost you? Oh, a lot. And you think this is a wise investment? Oh yeah, no, my investment coach is completely on board with my fiscal choices. What? <laughs> How do you know the word fiscal and also your investment coach? Yes. Why don't you welcome someone who knows stuff? Welcome to the show, Mr. Money Man. Ah, hello there, Lawson. Greetings, Stephen. Hello, Mr. Mr. Money. Mr. Money Bags, that is correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. money. <laughs> you friend. ever play Monopoly? Oh, I love having Monopolies. Oh. Okay, well, we know who you are, so why don't you tell us what you know? Oh, of course. It's all in the name, my boy. It's all in the name. <laughs> That's my friend. You're gonna, you're gonna have to be more specific. I know money! Bags and bags of money. <laughs> With money, 
Anything you want is yours for the taking and for the keeping. Remember that, Lawson, my boy. Exactly, right, yes, and I've been applying what you taught me to my comic book collection. Ooh. All for me, and yes, it's true. I want all the comics show Oh well for you. Ah, bravo! Bravo! <laughs> well, that doesn't seem very nice. Lawson, whenever a friend asks me for a favor, do you know what I tell them? Oh yeah, I know this one. You say... I tell them no! All right? I tell them no. You don't need friends or favors in this life. Remember that all you need is pennies, and quarters, and dollar bills raining from the sky. Those are your real friends. But <laughs> you do have friends that are that are real people, though, right? Right. Oh, of course I do. Of course I do. If you consider Mr. Franklin and Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> oh, hello there, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, you're looking mighty green today. Well, thank you, Mr. Franklin. Oh, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Is this my future? <laughs> oh, 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 by the way, thank you for inventing electricity. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, and thank you for not throwing away your opportunity. <laughs> okay, it's Bible story time with Kellen. <laughs> I need more of these. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. Hey Kellen, what do you have for us today? Well, today we are looking at a parable that Jesus taught, sometimes called the parable of the rich fool. Did somebody say rich? Yeah, I did, Mr. Mr. Uh... Archibald Moneybags, son, Mr. Archibald Moneybags, but you, you may call me Mr. Moneybags. Okay, Mr. Moneybags. Clearly, you're rich, but the person in the story was also a... Oh, no, no, I'd be happy to help you tell your little story there, son. And, mark my words, you won't regret it. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, a parable, if you didn't know, is a story that has a lesson at the end. Jesus used stories sometimes to help people see what he was talking about in different ways. On this occasion... Jesus was teaching when someone said, Teacher, tell my brother to give me half the stuff that belongs to our family. Now, they must have been having an argument over something about, like, who has the most stuff. So Jesus said, Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Then Jesus tells them a story. There once was a rich man. <laughs> Booyay! Oh, I will add this to the 25 smackaroos I won in that beauty contest. One year, his land produced a very large crop. <gasps> Look at all of my crops! <laughs> Stupendous! But what should I do? I don't have anywhere to store all of these crops. And there is no way I could use all of these crops in just one season all by myself. <laughs> what to do? What to do? Light bulb! <laughs> I will take all of my barns and tear them down. Wait for it. Tear them down. But then build bigger ones. <laughs> And then I will store all of my crops in these newer, larger barns. Ooh. <laughs> you know, I have plenty of crops, and these crops are going to last me for a long time. I mean, many, many years long time. So I should probably just take life a little easy. I suppose I'll just eat mm. and drink. and have a really good time. <clears throat> but God said to him, You foolish man, tonight I will take your life away uh, from you. Well, then who will get what you have no. prepared for yourself? No! no! Oh, my cord! Ah! <laughs> now there's so many bulls! Ah! I'm dead. 
to be clear, there were no, and I repeat, no inflatable kiddie pools in Jesus' story. But the rich man did die, and he never got to enjoy all the crops he had stored away for himself. Then Jesus said, that is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. The end. Wow, that was quite the ending. Yeah, I think the point Jesus was trying to make is that we only have so much time here on earth. Do we want to spend it caring about all the stuff we have? Or do we want to spend our time caring for the people we love? Yeah. Instead of keeping all the crops to himself, the rich guy could have shared with the people around him. And I think that's what Jesus meant when he said we should be rich in the sight of God. I think you're right. And that sounds like my job is done here. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Kellen. Bye, Kellen. Steven? Yes, Lawson? I think I might be hoarding comic books. <laughs> Might be. I don't want to die like the rich fool in Jesus' story. I don't want to end up friendless and alone. I'm your friend. Not now, Stephen. I have to do something. What should I do? What should I do? I don't. The <gasps> light bulb. Reveal the question. What do you have that you can share? Comic books. Yeah. I have so many. <gasps> You get a comic, you get a comic, you get a comic, you get a comic. Lawson? You get a comic. Thank you. What do you have that you could share? Could be stuff you have, or you could share your time, or your talents. It's our responsibility to share what we have, and it's one of our rules for life. Share what you have. Talk about what you have to share with each other. And we'll see you next week. I'm Steven. And I'm Lawson. And this was the So-and-So Show. Bow, 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 bow. Hello. It's not about money anymore for me. No, oh, no, not, not at all. I'm going to share from now on. Yes. Sharing is caring. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to change my name even. I change my name. It's, it's not Mr. Moneybags anymore. No. See? It's gone. In fact, uh, my name is Mr. Empty Pockets. That's right. I'm Mr. Empty Pockets now because I, I give away so much money that my pockets are empty. Hello?